Now, I want to invite to the stage a former president of Ireland and great international human rights activist, Mary Robinson, to announce a mega commitment. In the last few years, we have worked harder and harder to get more and more groups and individuals together around specific commitments so they could leverage each other's strength and have a bigger impact on more people. The first one is the one that Mary will introduce now. Thank you. Mr. President, <clears throat> I've got a sexy voice. I've got a bad common cold. Um, uh, I'm delighted to announce this particular commitment because I've been an admirer for a long time of waste pickers worldwide. And this is, as you said, a mega commitment. So listen up. Every second, 52 tons of trash are deposited in landfills across the world. Garbage leaches toxins into our waterways, releases greenhouse gases into our atmosphere, and creates uns unsavory and unsafe living and working conditions. GCI members come from vastly different geographies, economies, and cultural backgrounds. But all of their communities are burdened by environmental degradation and health problems connected to trash. Issues exacerbated for impoverished populations and women who make up the majority of waste scavengers or pickers worldwide. So, Mr. President, I'm very pleased to honor the following members who are addressing this critical issue. First, I'd like to invite, introduce John Williams of HER Engineering. With his leadership, members of CGI's Rethinking Waste Action Network have come together to turn waste into income, resources, and energy. I would also, I would also like to introduce Roxanne Mankin Kaysen of the Kaysen Family Foundation, which is launching a new web platform that will facilitate partnerships with corporations to empower waste pickers around the world, especially women. <laughs> Jyoti Mapsekar of Sri Muk um, Mukti uh, Sangatana, it's not an Irish uh, expression, um, <laughs> will, will train 250 women and girls waste scavengers in India in environmental um, uh, in entrepreneurship. Doug Woodring of Project Kaise and Paul Gilman of Coventa Energy Corporation. Project Kaise will launch the Plastic Disclosure Project, which will require that companies report their plastic footprints. Coventa is partnering with Project Kaise to collect plastic de debris from the world's oceans and turn it into a valuable project using a new wave, wave waste to energy technology. Joseph Aldeg Aldegan, um, of the Global Network for Environment and Economic Development Research commits to convert wastewater into affordable power and environmentally safe fertilizer for low-income African farmers. And finally, but last but not least, Josira uh, Lose Sawiris of Enhancement of Integrated Services and Waste Recycling will address Cairo's growing waste problems in low-income residential areas. And now I need the commitment. Is this the commitment? Before they go, I want to just tell off you something you've never thought about this. Hardly anybody comes to an event like CGI thinking they want to make a good impression, thinking about garbage. <laughs> Very few people in the world get turned on by the idea that you could close landfills. But if you want to fight climate change, improve public health, find new sources of wealth for poor people, and create new entrepreneurs, the closest thing to a silver bullet in the world, in most countries, is closing all the landfills in all the cities. 
We had a commitment last year from an American company that has already closed a landfill in a Massachusetts town and recovered the biogas and is generating energy and lowering the cost of electricity and improving the environment and putting more people to work. But I do a lot of this work around the world through our climate change project. And almost every landfill is a gold mine, which is why so many poor people scavenge in them because the glass, the plastic, the metal can be recycled. The food can be turned over uh, to farmers to make organic fertilizer. And everything else can be turned into a fuel source. It can be compacted and used to generate electricity. Or you can use the organic material itself to generate methane or other biogases and use that for fuel. The point is that all over the world in developing countries, Valuable land that could be used for decent housing, it could be used for new factories, it could be used for schools, it could be used for playgrounds and recreational facilities, is being swallowed up by landfills that are basically enormous sources of wealth if they're converted, recycled, or compacted and burned for energy. It's a terrible waste and a, st a staggering opportunity. So I was thrilled that they wanted to be the first Megasource. And of course, those who are concerned about the ocean, you know about all the trash that's just wandering around in these big globs in the ocean and all the problems that presents. So if you have any interest, I would urge all of you to contact these folks or contact us if you care about what's going on at home. But every country, rich and poor, that is struggling with major landfill issues should look at those who have looked at those and seen gold mines. Or maybe the better analogy is oil wells. They're energy sources, wealth sources, and you can recover the land and give them to people who really need it for purposes that are really needed. Let's give them a big hand. Thank you. Thank you.